Hey everyone, welcome back to another video by Camroom 5. In today's video, we're going to be talking about some planning questions that more or less appear in the ATP examination of O levels. So we will be solving some planning questions from recent years to see how those questions are structured and what are the most suitable answers. This question has been taken from a recent paper and it says a mixture of solid contains barium sulfate and sodium chloride only. Barium sulfate is insoluble in water. Sodium chloride is soluble in water. Describe how to separate the mixture to obtain pure barium sulfate and pure crystals of sodium chloride. So the first thing you will do is obviously you have a solid mixture. You can't pick on individual particles. So you first have to dissolve in water. So first talk about dissolve the mixture using distilled water in a beaker while you talk about dissolving you need to talk about how you will do it so do mention use or take help from use a stirrer and heat the solution gently so that all sodium chloride is dissolved. During this time you will notice that barium sulfate is not going to be dissolving because it's insoluble in water. So what you'll do next, you will mention use a filter paper on a filter funnel and pour the mixture on the filter paper. So this time you are filtering and then what happens is barium sulfate is going to remain as a residue. So barium sulfate solid remains as residue while sodium chloride aqueous passes as filtrate. There has to be an E also here. Then you'll mention wash the residue. Why do we wash the residue? It's because when you pass the solution from a filter paper, it is very likely that some of the sodium chloride ions are still stuck on the filter paper. So you want to make sure that all the sodium chloride ions have passed along the water. So you wash the residue with distilled water. Now you have barium sulfate which is slightly wet on the filter paper and you have the filtrate which is the sodium chloride aqueous. So for barium sulfate you say dry barium sulfate residue using folds of dry filter paper. Now you have solid pure barium sulfate and for the sodium chloride you continue by saying take the filtrate in a china dish in a china dish and heat to saturation point when you heat a solution ultimately it reaches a saturation point where it has the maximum solute dissolved in it so heat the solution in a china dish and heat it to saturation point then allow it to cool and evaporate the water is going to cool and evaporate leaving behind the crystals once you get the crystals those crystals are still wet so you will say dry the crystals using folds of 
clean, dry, and filter paper. So you're done. If I'm not wrong, it was a six mark question and six strong points have been written. Moving on, let's see this question. A student is provided with two bottles labeled A and B and a supply of water. One of the bottles contains 1.00 gram of solid potassium chloride. The other bottle contains 1.00 gram of solid calcium chloride. When potassium chloride dissolves in water, the change is endothermic. When calcium chloride dissolves in water, the change is exothermic. Plan experiments based on dissolving the solids in water to decide which compound is in each bottle. Which compound produces the greatest heat change per gram of solid. Your plan may use any of the apparatus normally found in a chemistry laboratory but no other chemicals. Your plan must state all the measurements you need to make. Your plan must use the same experimental procedure for each solid. It's very easy, right? Because endothermic reactions absorb heat and when they absorb heat, the temperature decreases. And exothermic re reactions release heat. And when they release heat, the temperature increases. So it's very easy. Make sure you talk about them dissolving in water, but make sure you are taking the same amount of water in both scenarios. So you will say take two beakers and add let's suppose 25.0 centimeter cube distilled water distilled water in each. How will you take 25.0 centimeter cube? So do mention using a pipette or a burette or a measuring cylinder. A pipette or a burette or a measuring cylinder. Now what will you do? You will have to make sure that the temperature is going to change, right? So you first record the initial temperature before adding solid using thermometer using thermometer and record it so you measured initial temperatures of both scenarios now add sample one in first beaker and immediately now immediately is important here immediately record the change in temperature the change in temperature by recording final temperature you measure the final temperature using the thermometer and you will also see how much temperature is changing is it increasing or decreasing now you repeat it should be 0.4 repeat with second sample in second beaker right second sample in second beaker now this way you have found out which is which so you will say if final temperature is more then it is calcium chloride or if final temperature is lower then it is potassium chloride now how do we find the greatest change per gram of solid so greatest heat change heat change is dependent upon how much temperature was changed right so now that is tricky for this you need to mention how much temperature was being changed per gram. So, which solid produces the greatest heat change per gram? First find the heat. So, find the heat released or absorbed using equation heat is equals to mass of water specific heat of water change in temperature 
m is the mass of water c is the specific heat of water and delta t is change in temperature then divide the heat by 1.00 gram so if heat change was more the temperature change was more it means more heat was released and then it was compared to 1 gram if less temperature change was there less heat was released per gram so this is how you complete your experiment in the next video we'll do more of such questions